With Powerwall 3 mounted, the next step is to bring conduit and wiring into the unit. Before beginning any wiring, ensure that the enable switch is turned off. Wiring will connect Powerwall 3 to a 60 amp two pole breaker with two line conductors, a neutral conductor, and a grounding conductor. The 60 amp breaker for Powerwall 3 is typically located in backup gateway, but can also be located in a load center that will be backed up by the system. Powerwall 3 is also connected to the islanding contactor with a four wire communication cable. Installers may choose to run all these conductors in an appropriately sized conduit or separately. Run conduit as needed and attach the conduit fittings to Powerwall 3's conduit entry knockouts. Any conduit entering the unit must use IP65 rated fittings. With the conduit run completed, take time to remove any dust or debris from the wiring terminals. All wiring terminations are made in the top section of Powerwall. AC wiring is landed on these terminals, labeled Line 1, Line 2, and Neutral. Solar DC wiring is terminated here on the terminals labeled positive and negative 1 through 6. Grounding conductors for both AC and DC circuits are made on this ground bar. Low voltage connections, including communication wiring and Ethernet, are made on the Tesla Asset Controller, or TACO, located here. Since conduit can enter Powerwall 3 on either the left or right side, Installers must utilize the built-in wire management clips when wiring must pass from one side to the other. Do not route any wiring in front of the Tesla Asset Controller or LED, as it will interfere with installing the front cover. Bring the AC wires into the enclosure with enough slack to reach the AC terminals while also providing a service loop. Use the terminal block as a guide for how much wire to strip from the end of each conductor. The AC terminal block has two rows that can accept wiring. Either row can be used, but Tesla recommends using the front row for ease of install. To open the terminal, insert a cabinet tip flathead screwdriver into the rectangular hole and press firmly. With the terminal open, insert the conductor into the adjacent round hole. Remove the screwdriver to close the terminal. Perform a tug test by lightly pulling upward on the conductor to ensure that it is properly seated and does not pull out of the terminal. If the conductor passes the tug test and remains in place, firmly press the conductor in again. If the wire pulls out of the terminal during the tug test, retry and ensure that the terminal is fully opened before inserting the wire. Continue this process with the other AC terminals. Retrieve one of the cable ties and an anchor from the Powerwall 3 accessory bag. Insert the anchor into the threaded hole by firmly pressing inward. Run the cable tie through the anchor and use it to secure the AC wiring. After securing with the cable tie, conductors should not extend beyond the sides of the enclosure as this will interfere with installing the front cover. For solar DC conductors, bring enough wire into the enclosure to reach the DC terminals, again, providing a service loop. Use the terminal block as a guide for how much wire to strip from the end of each conductor. Before terminating any DC conductors, ensure that the enable switch for Powerwall 3 is turned off. Please note that only stranded conductors can be used on these terminals, no solid conductors. Again, use a cabinet tip flathead screwdriver in the rectangular hole to open the terminal. Insert the conductor into the adjacent round hole and remove the screwdriver to close the terminal. Perform a tug test on the conductor to ensure that it is properly seated in the terminal, then continue with the other DC terminals. Each of the six DC terminals can accommodate circuits of up to 13 amps. When a circuit has more than 13 amps, jumpers are used to split the current between two DC terminals. Retrieve the jumpers from the Powerwall 3 accessory bag. Do not use any other type of jumper. In this example, circuit 1 has greater than 13 amps. A jumper is installed to connect positive 1 and 2, and another jumper connects negative 1 and 2. This combined terminal 
can now accept up to 26 amps. In this example, circuit 3 will have less than 13 amps and does not need a jumper. When installing jumpers, ensure that they are fully inserted into the terminals. Note that some units have a higher ampacity rating of 15 amps for a single terminal and 30 amps for jumped terminals. Refer to the product label for exact specifications. With all solar DC conductors terminated, use the cable tie and anchor from the accessory bag to neatly manage the DC wiring. To reduce electromagnetic interference, or EMI, Powerwall 3 includes one clamp-on ferrite core and an EMI shield. Locate the low-voltage harness. Clamp the ferrite core around this harness and ensure that it latches closed. If the packaging includes two large ferrite cores, install them around both the AC and DC conductors. Align the bottom of the EMI shield with the gap between the DC terminal block and the enclosure. Push the EMI shield into place and ensure that it does not protrude beyond the edges of the enclosure. With the AC and DC connections completed, the next step is to connect Powerwall 3 to backup switch or backup gateway. This is done with a four conductor shielded communication cable with one twisted pair. Tesla recommends routing the communication wiring through the left side of the enclosure using the wire management tabs to ensure wires do not block the Tesla asset controller. Do not route loose wires through the front of the enclosure. Strip the communication wire jacket so that it does not extend past the fan duct. This will ensure the individual conductors lie flat, leaving room for the front cover to be installed. Strip the installation from the end of each conductor. Insert a cabinet tip screwdriver into each of the slots to open the terminals. Insert each conductor as far as possible into the terminal and remove the screwdriver from the slot to close the terminal. To terminate grounding conductors, begin by stripping the insulation from each conductor. Wrap the communication cable drain wire around one of the equipment grounding conductors and insert the two twisted wires into one of the equipment grounding terminals and use a T20 Torx bit to tighten the lug to four Newton meters. Proceed with terminating any remaining grounding conductors. Where required by local code, Powerwall 3 can be wired to a system shutdown switch that manually initiates rapid shutdown, disabling solar output. The system shutdown switch is wired through a low voltage 12 volt DC 1 amp control circuit connected to Powerwall 3's RSD ports. Begin by removing the factory installed jumper from the RSD in RSD out ports on the Powerwall 3 RSD connector. Wire a two-conductor communication cable with at a minimum 24-gauge conductors to the RSD ports. Route the two conductors to the connector as shown below, using the wire management tab to prevent them from blocking the Tesla asset controller. Strip the end of each conductor. Insert a cabinet tip screwdriver into each slot to open the terminal. Insert each conductor as far as possible into the terminal and remove the screwdriver from the slot to close the terminal. Connect the other end of the two conductor communication wire to a suitable DC switch. System shutdown switches must be listed or recognized as an emergency stop button, emergency stop device, or emergency stop unit. The switch must be installed externally in a readily accessible location, preferably near utility meters, and cabling must not exceed the maximum allowable length. To provide a hardwired internet connection to Powerwall 3, connect to the customer's internet router with a CAT5 or higher cable with an RJ45 connector. Powerwall 3 has two Ethernet ports. Either one can be used to connect to the customer's router. The second Ethernet port is used for installations with multiple Powerwall 3 units and will be covered in a separate video.